Good evening, YouTube. So, tutorial time. At long last, it has been... Wow. So long since my last tutorial. What was it? Four months ago? In any case, too long. So, over the next few days, um, as often as possible, I'm going to be uploading some new tutorials. Now, they're going to be based around... Well, some of them based around Star Trek-style effects in 3D Studio Max, as always. Well, as, as usual. So, um, the first tutorial is going to be less sci-fi-ish. Uh, more reality-ish, if that's a word. So, um, I'm going to be showing you how to create a realistic planet atmosphere. Um, using volumetrics, of course. Now, um, generally speaking, planet atmospheres in this particular application are made by using a gradient and a sphere with the gradient mapped to it, of course. So, this is going to look a little bit different, but in a good way. So, um, at, by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create a planet, assuming you already know the rest of it, a planet uh, with a realistic atmosphere, um, which will become a sky if you zoom close enough to the sphere, which, as you can imagine, would be quite useful. So, uh, let's get going then. We're going to create a sphere. I'm unfortunate enough to be running at uh, 720p on a monitor which doesn't support it, so the left side of my screen, no sorry, the right side of my screen has gone missing for a while. So anyway, let's give it 128 segments. And blue, perfect, blue for atmosphere. Actually, no, that's incorrect, it needs to be green. Never mind, I can't see that control. So for the moment, let's just leave it blue. And next up, what you need to do is head into Helpers, go to Atmospheric Apparatus, and we'll create a Sphere Gizmo. Zoom into the center of your planet. Normally, I would use the Align function for this, but oh well. Highlight the center, get it positioned correctly, and zoom out. There we go. Let's leave it around there. So, now we head into rendering, environment, and we'll add the volume fog. Volumetric fog. Pick gizmo, select the sphere gizmo. And give it a color. How about blue? I'll just correct our planet here. This needs to be, let's say, a greenish yellow. Not very realistic, but oh well, it works. And let's render that. Oops, I hit the F9, which actually pauses the recording. Render. Okay, um, well, we have something going on there, but definitely not an atmosphere. So what we've got to do is we'll create some lighting on this planet. Let's just add in a target spot. Not really ideal, but if it works... Let's just move it around till we find something that looks good. Not necessarily realistic, just, you know, looks good. And that's decent, I suppose. Now let's change a few settings. Enable shadows. And head down here, spotlight parameters. And we will increase, increase this value. Okay, and let's render that now. Well, we've got a planet light uh, lit. So now let's work on that atmosphere. It could be a lot better. So if we just move this window up here and move down, uh, you will see it says noise threshold here and uniformity. Now uniformity is essentially um, how often the same pattern is repeated. So. If you take a look at our previous render, you'll see that it's scattered around. 
that's because we have noise enabled which is undisableable so let's just increase uniformity to one and render out again yes definitely better but if you can see here we've still got some noise in the atmosphere so let's just make a few changes to our settings no noise and let's increase that you can play around with the settings until you find something you like of course that's definitely looking better let's boost a little bit more let's leave it a nice round 40 Okay, 40.01. There we go. There we go. It looks pretty decent. There are still a few patches here and there. Let's find out what happens if we set this to zero. Just so you won't have to spend that time. There we go. Um, so we have established that zero is the best setting for this. Now, um, as you can see, the atmosphere around here is also receiving illumination. Now, we'll deal with that in a later tutorial because I'm limited to 10 minutes here. So, um, next I'm just going to tweak this atmosphere a bit because it is a bit thick there, isn't it? So, we'll just go and uh, select our... whatever it's called, gizmo. Let's jump down to 88. definitely looking a bit better but it's definitely not dense enough so to solve this we shall increase the density I think it looks reasonable now I will demonstrate what I was talking about before if you just zoom in here the sphere will look terrible up close but as for the atmosphere you'll find out now it's beginning to form a sky Now, depending on um, how you want your sky to look, for example, if there's a sun nearby, um, or if you're panning uh, from the pl planet's surface up into orbit, you may want to tweak these, these settings again, like perhaps a lighter blue for kind of a, a sunset type shot. You could put stars up there, put a moon in there, and obviously detail the ground. But um, you can, I'm assuming you can see where I'm going with this. If you zoom out here, you'll be zooming out to a, well, to essentially a planet, obviously. So yeah, you could, of course, also tweak the atmosphere so that as you zoom in, zoom in closer, it will increase in density. And it, it, like, because it can look a bit unrealistic if you have this lit atmosphere on the dark side of a planet it's just hanging there in space so that's something you might want to consider for long shots like that um, but I think you can see pretty much where I'm going with this now um, I just wanted to kind of put this out there so that people that aren't really uh, aware of this particular method of creating an atmosphere will get a chance to have a look at it and see if it's right for them there's so much you can do to this effect to make it look so much better but due to the 10 minute time limit and uh, my limited system resources here, I'm running on an old laptop, don't tell anyone. Um, I can't really go into as much detail as I would want to. So I think I'm going to have to wrap this up for now because I've got no clock and I am so bad at recognizing when I'm running out of time. So um, thank you for watching this if you do watch it, of course, and I'll see you in my next tutorial.